I have just uh, I have just recorded the intro and the astrological report and forgot to connect my sound. These are the lessons that we have. Okay. Hello and welcome to Live in the Solution. I am your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with your readings for um, September the 23rd through September the 29th. So welcome. If you are new, thank you for tuning in. And I do hope you like these readings and that you'll return. And if you are returning, thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Thank you for supporting my channel. These readings are for the collective. So take what resonates and leave the rest because sometimes they can be specifics when spirit wants to connect with someone um, in particular. Um, so, you know, come back later in the week and rewatch it because it might make more sense to you then. I get a lot of uh, emails telling me that, that at first they didn't get it and then somehow they watched it again and, and, uh, and it made perfect sense for them. Now, if you would like a personal private reading, click on this link or go to my website. You can see what kind of readings I offer. I live to give readings. <laughs> I love it. Um, I often go over time because I get so into it. Now, oh, I have a Facebook group and this Facebook group is so much fun. Um, I go, I do a live feed within the group twice, two, two, every two weeks. Uh, and they correlate correlate with either the new moon or the full moon. And so we look at charts and we see where it falls in your charts. And then we, uh, you know, I have the tarot card reading and the tarot cards with me and I answer questions. So we have a lot of fun there. Um, you know, it's a private group, so you have to ask to be, uh, to, to, to join. And it is uh, live in the solution astrology. Um, but the link will be below. Everything will be in the show more section below. All the links to the other videos, the Facebook group, my my website, everything. If you're looking on a phone, it's a little triangle that's pointing down. Click on that and that will take you to all the links. Um, now, another way to support me, guys, is through Patreon. Um, and the link to that will be here or you the link will be below too. I post things on Patreon that I don't post anywhere else. Um, so check that out. Now, uh, lastly, these readings come in three sections. The intro, which is this, the astrological report, and the tarot card reading. And there will be skip times listed below to get to, especially if you're checking out your Sun, Moon, and Rising, so you don't have to re-watch the intro or the astrology report. And if you're not into the astrology, you can go straight to the tarot. If you're not into the tarot, you can do the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. And without further ado, let's go to the astrology report, shall we? Hello and welcome to the astrology section of your reading uh, for September the 23rd through September the 29th. This is the second time I'm doing this. Bear with me. I didn't have the uh, mic on before. Anyway, so on the 23rd, let me see, that's Monday. Yes, the 23rd is Monday. On Monday, the 23rd of September, we have the fall or autumn equinox. Um, and that's here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the spring or vernal equinox. Vernal stands for youthful and fresh. Just like me, <laughs> um, And that's in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's the first day of spring or autumn. Now, and that is, listen, uh, in the equinox, the sun is directly over the equator right? So all around the globe, daylight and night, the night darkness are equal. There's, it's completely equal all around the globe. Uh, now on the 24th, on Tuesday the 24th, Mercury's in a beautiful relationship with Jupiter. This is a fabulous day for networking and connecting um, 
with business associates. You know, it's a great time to look. The whole emphasis is on communication. You could, you will charm anyone that crosses your path. Um, and it's a really good time to launch a social media campaign or an email campaign, anything to get your uh, wares, whatever you're selling, your product, your service, um, or you know whatever it is for you, get it out there. This is a wonderful time to get uh, whatever it is that you're selling out there. Now, uh, September the 28th is a huge super new moon. And it's because the moon is very close to the earth. And so it appears huge in the sky. Um, now, the new moon, of course, new new moons are all about intentions. What am I going to start now to that I can complete soon? What is it? You know, great time to start, uh, you know, start a business, a project. But this is all about relationships. Libra is about relationships. And um, whether it's romantic, work relationships, friendships, family, or relationships with ourselves. Um, now, on the same day, Venus, which is the ruling planet of Libra, is also in Libra and is in a beautiful relationship with Jupiter. Jupiter's abundance, bigger, better, more. So this is all about harmony. It's all about fairness. It's all about balance. Um, and this is an incredible time to go out and socialize, have a good time, connect with people. Um, now, what I will say is that at the same time that this new moon is happening, um, the sun and well, first of all, we've got four planets in Libra, right? It's what we call in astrology a stellion of planets. So there's a lot of focus on relationships. But not only that, we have uh, Chiron opposite this new this uh, new moon, and Chiron is in Aries, and it's about Chiron's the wounded healer, right? So we need to kind of look at where we can heal our relationship with ourselves. How can we love ourselves more? How can we heal relationships that haven't been doing so well? Can we heal them? Do we need to let them go? Um, so we really have to kind of look at these honestly. It, look, Libra is about fairness. It's about balance. It's about logic, right? So we need to look at things logically, not emotionally. So when we're looking back at how we've been in relationships and thing, behaviors that don't work, we must not beat ourselves up about it. Don't go down the rabbit hole. Look at it dispassionately, if you will, logically, and say, okay, that didn't work. What can I change about that? What, what can I own? What can I move on from? And what can I be aware of going forward? These are self. This is self-awareness because we've got Saturn at play, right? Saturn is just slowed down and is going forward, but very, very slowly. So the energies of Saturn has been amplified. And that Saturn is about the Lord of time. So it's very slow. Things won't happen perhaps as fast as we wish them to. Um, but, um, and, and Saturn's the planet of lessons. So we need to, look, this is a really important thing. We need to address anything that we've had on the back burner. We've, we've been in Virgo. Virgo's about clearing things out and organizing, right? Crossing T's, dotting I's. And then we come into Libra and it's time to start some action, to get things together, start doing things. So look at where you have procrastinated in your life. How is that going to make you feel when you start doing it? It's going to make you feel empowered. Now, Libra is about fairness. It's about balance. It's about relationships. It's about logic. And as I said, we have four planets in Libra. We have Venus um, and Mercury. And they do very well in uh, Libra. I mean, Venus is Venus is the ruling planet of Libra. So it's come home. Um, there's an appreciation for music, art, poetry. She's very, Venus is very sophisticated and 
fine in uh, Libra. And Mercury is about communication. So there's this wonderful, and it's, and Mercury's next to Venus. So there's this wonderful harmonizing way of communicating and connecting with people. Um, and uh, the sun and moon, of course, have just joined uh, Libra. This is a perfect time to socialize and make new connections. Um, now, what I want to mention is we need to get things done, right, in Libra, because we have uh, Virgo, Libra, and Sagittarius. Those three uh, zodiac signs are kind of in full, ready for the winter. It's like that kind of energy of action energy right because in this time it back in the day we would be harvesting we would be um smoking meat we would be pickling vegetables we'd be getting ready for for the winter right for the for the hibernation of winter where we can't grow anything so we have to make sure that we have all our stockpiles in place to get us through the winter our lives depended on it so this was a very active time and even in the southern hemisphere with spring you're planting your um your you're tending to the animals, animals are being born. I mean, you know, we, it's, it was a busy time preparing for the fall, for the harvest, you know, so it's work. These are active times, spring and fall, very uh, action oriented. So we need to get off our bums and get to work. We need to address anything that we have been procrastinating. Um, now I just this well I will say that both the spring and the fall are about preparation right spring cleaning and then falling um taking action of getting everything together for the winter right in the fall now I I'd be remiss if I did not mention Pluto Pluto is has is also slowing down and will station direct on the 2nd or 3rd of October depending on where you are on the planet um now pluto so the energies of pluto we've been feeling them we've been seeing the change we've been seeing the transformation of governments right um pluto digs deep right and dredges up all the dirt to bring out into the light so we are seeing stuff like i mean look at what's coming up look at what's been coming up for the last couple of years and what we're really seeing with you know leaders around the world um they can't hide we're seeing their corruption we're seeing their abuse of power and we're seeing um behind we're seeing seeing them and we'll be seeing behind the scenes we're literally seeing behind the scenes so we're seeing also people who are in the shadows right we're seeing that um so all this dirt that's been hiding is being dredged up um it's a time of karma um leaders are being exposed and in this digital age it's harder for them to get away with nefarious behavior um people around the world are becoming empowered through protests i mean it is happening on a huge scale i mean hong kong venezuela france uk the us and, and many other countries the social media platforms like twitter facebook um, instagram and others make information available to us faster than ever before so you can't kind of hide anything you can't sweep something under the carpet you can't it's just not possible. Listen, I don't know if any of you saw the uh, strike, the climate, uh, the strike for the climate crisis. I'm going to say it's a climate crisis that we're in, and there were billions of people around the world protesting Fridays, right, for going on strike on Fridays. It was, I mean, it was massive, such a massive event that could not have happened without social media, really. It couldn't have been organized on such a large scale. I mean, all around the globe. You know, hopefully leaders will really hear, but it's not, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. It's political. But anyway, I say all of this 
to say that if you have anything festering in the crevices of your life, you need to bring it up and deal with it. Um, this is what happens. Sometimes what, it's the, what immobilizes us is the thought of having to deal with it and what we've got to do and how it's going to play out. Don't think about how it's going to play out because then you won't do it. Just do one little thing towards it. You know, if it's like you've got to do paperwork or taxes or whatever it is that you've got to take care of or bills or, you know, dealing with someone that you've been meaning to deal with. I had a whole list today and I got it done. This is uh, very karmic because if you don't get it done, it's going to really bite you. You know, it's going to come up and it's going to glaringly, and then you'll realize you, you will be held accountable for, for what you haven't done. Um, so taking this action will empower you. Right? It'll make you feel powerful. And you'll be working with the energies, our astrological energies that are available to you. So, you know, it's important to just, you know, look under the carpet where you swept stuff up. Anything that's festering in the crevices of your life, get it out. Start taking action. I can't tell you how important it is to take action right now. Don't forget, we are coming to the end of a decade. This is a huge shift in energy. And all the astrologers are talking about this huge event in January when, uh, when Saturn and Pluto are conjunct. There's so much more going on at the time, but it is major. So um, I'm. that's another story. We'll get into that another day. Anyway, guys, take action. <laughs> Let's go to your tarot card reading, shall we? Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your reading for September the 23rd through September the 29th. I've already shuffled these cards. I'll do it one last time for posterity. This is for Gemini, for Gemini. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Gemini for September the 23rd through September the 29th? Three cards for Gemini, please. Three cards for Gemini. Two more cards for Gemini. Two more cards for Gemini. Two more cards for Gemini. There you go. One more card. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, you've got two there. Two in the last position. Okay, Gemini. We're going to do the clarifying cards now. These are clarifying cards. I've also um, shuffled these off screen. Here we go. This is for Gemini. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Gemini through these clarifying cards for this coming week? Please clarify. Oh, there you go. Please clarify. There we go. Please clarify these two cards. There you go. Okay. Here are your cards, Gemini. Okay, the first card out for you is the Emperor. Clarifying the Emperor is the Seven of Cups. Then you have the Four of Wands. Clarifying the Four of Wands is the Page of Swords. Then you have the Queen of Swords right next to the Temperance card. And then you have the Five of Pentacles. Gemini, what's going on with you? Well, we have the Emperor, the King of Kings, if you will. He's, the, he's logical. He's kind of... Uh, uh, I don't want to say devoid of passion, but 
lo- he's very logical and rational. And he's all about structuring and organizing. You know, he's very Saturnian. He's, you know, going to make sure everything's in place, everything's um, ready to go. And it's also about purging. This is about getting rid of what no longer works for you. That includes people, places, jobs, you know, um, things that no longer work for you. Clear things out, clear the decks. It's about, you know, donate clothes that you no longer wear um, or possessions or sell them or, you know, just clear out. It's time to clear, to clear the decks cross your T's, dot your I's. And I was talking about this in the astrological, you have to kind of address everything that you've been procrastinating. This is about taking action. It's about taking care of all that, clearing up any kind of debris or mess that we've made in our life, addressing it. And here, you clarifying it, you have the seven of cups. And the seven of cups is you have these choices and you don't know which to which way to go, this confusion. And so look, I was talking about this, you know, look at what's hiding in the crevices of your life. What have you not dealt with? What have you not been able to deal with so far because it's too overwhelming? What is it that you've kind of brushed to the side, put on the back burner, tried to forget about? Um, and it's almost like you don't even know which direction to go in. You know, um, you have so many choices. And this is because there's no clarity that when the seven of cups comes in, I always, it's seven is introspective. So I always say, go inside. All the answers are within Gemini. We have to quieten the mind. It's not like, I, I always say this, meditation doesn't control your mind, but what it does is it stops your mind from controlling you. You can get a little respite from it. You can t- you can have a little distance from it. You can laugh at it. Laugh at your mind. You know, don't get attached to it. Um, so you might be kind of attached to some thoughts and some ideas that are going through your head or something that perhaps you haven't taken care of. Um, and you don't even know where to start. It's like, but don't think about the bigger picture. Don't think about doing it all. Don't think about you know, if it's going to cost you, don't think about what the outcome is going to be. Just do it. Just take some small steps and do it. I had to do that this week. I, I had to deal with all this stuff that I had kind of put on the back burner through, you know, my morning, the morning of my mom and my brother, and I just couldn't deal with it then. And now I'm dealing with the wreckage of my past, <laughs> you know, but it's it was empowering to actually just because you know sometimes you're like oh my god I haven't done this I haven't done that I can't I can't I need to you know run away <laughs> let me move countries I can't deal with it um, but then when I started I was really getting into it and I was feeling good and empowered and that's where what will happen for you but go inside darling quiet that mind don't you know get up and do what you need to do. Um, and then you have the four of one. So this is like the end of a project. This could be the end of what you've not been taking care of. And this is like feeling great. This will give you a really firm foundation. It's going to make you, um, it's going to make you feel empowered. It's going to make you feel good about yourself and your situation and your life. It's going to give you that foundation on which to bounce from, you know, jump off from. Um, and you have the page of swords and pages of messengers, but this page, I'm getting that you are ready to move on to the next phase of your life. You know, pages have been in service to the knight and, and ultimately under the king, right? And it gets to uh, the stage where they've learned everything that they can. They have all the experience, you know, working under someone and serving them. And now it's time for them to break free and go out on their own and actually do become a knight, right? You have to get out and, you know, untie the, uh, cut the umbilical cord and get out there and do what you need to do. 
Now, you have two cards in the next position. You have the Queen of Swords. She is this brilliant businesswoman. She's astute. She's intelligent. She's formidable. Um, she's very good at closing deals. She is negotiated. She can see through to a person's soul. She is no joke. She studied people for a long time. And she's about telling the truth no matter what. She sees the truth in the situation. She'll tell you. She has no bones about it. She just tells it like it is. And, and she does so not to hurt your feelings. And you may get your feelings hurt. But don't, don't shoot the messenger. It's time to kind of, some, when you hear this message, it's time to kind of uh, take what is said and really look at it. What can you own? Forget about how it was delivered. Forget about how it was said. You know, it's about being logical. Look at this situation and don't beat yourself up. And don't get hurt or oversensitive. It's about being logical. It's about being factual. It's about seeing the truth. What can you own? Um, and right next to it, you've got the temperance. So you have to temper your emotions, right? You've got to balance things out. You have to kind of be equal, see things equally right. Because I feel that if you don't do that, you can kind of fall into a I'm getting pit of despair. It's like you could look, we can easily get hurt sometimes by the way this information is delivered, but we need to hear it. You know, it's like put your big girl panties on <laughs> or your big boy trousers. <laughs> I mean, it's like you've got to kind of, this is a time where you have to kind of pull your shoes. Oh, I, I saw something today. Um, I'm going to read it to you because this is really poignant, actually. Um, some of us still carry the wounds of being mistreated by parents or partners. I hope um, I hope, I hope that we know, it says you know, but that we know that not everyone is annoyed with us. Not everyone is upset with us. Not everyone is rooting for us to fail. Grant yourself the same kindness you give to others. This is a time we need to be kind to ourselves. So some of it, something that somebody says will, um, can kick off a feeling that where we're judging ourselves and then we're angry at the other person for get, taking us to that place. So we have to look for that logical um, message in there. We have to be logical. We have to be um, dispassionate, if you will. We, we can't bring our feelings into it. We have to temper our emotions. This is everything in moderation. This is looking for balance. This is looking for fairness. And clarifying it, you've got the, the Five of Pentacles, which is deprivation. Um, look, the antidote to deprivation is gratitude. So we're going to deprive ourselves of an incredible uh, lesson and information that we need to hear if we go into that, oh, woe is me, and they spoke to me like that, and how dare they, and, you know, and then you go into the rabbit hole, right? As I said in the astrological report, I was telling this uh, person that I know, you know, be careful of going down the rabbit hole, and he said, honey, sometimes I am the rabbit hole. <laughs> well, don't be the rabbit hole. <laughs> don't go down that place where, you know, this deprivation, it's like, poor me, I've been, I've had a terrible life. We have to kind of look at our storylines, right? And we have to change our storylines at this point. It's about um, waking up. It's about waking up. It's about seeing our past and, and how we've blocked our past because we are the ones, look, what happened to us as children was not our responsibility. It wasn't. It happened. However, it is our responsibility to recover from that and not blame everyone for it. There comes a point where you have to deal with it. You have to, and, and leave it in the past if need be. Move forward 
are unencumbered by the chains that pull you back daily, though that torturous pain. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, oh, I have this book that I'm telling you, this is brilliant. Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. Um, and he talks about the pain body in this and how we recreate the pain body again and again and again um, by our actions and our reactions, right? We have to learn to respond instead of react and we, so that we can move forward. We're prisoners of our own minds at this point, right? So we have to free ourselves of that. And the only way to do that really is gratitude. Gra gratitude. I'm grateful that I received that message, even if you're not. <laughs> you know, you start being gratitude for little tiny things. It becomes, you have to kind of practice. You've got to bring it in as a new habit, you know. And then the more uh, grateful you are, the more things you have, the more gratitude you express the more things that will come into your life that you'll be grateful for. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video, share it with friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, social media, and help me to help this channel grow. And comment. I answer every comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.